Both of LaSalle's basketball teams won their homecoming games, so what's next? Pigs flying, the pandemic being over, a Philadelphia team winning a championship this year, Sportsline not being the best show on LaSalle TV? Oh wait, they both lost their games after homecoming. Okay, yeah, that's more like it. Hello, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Tyler Small. In yet another week, basketball needed overtime before deciding the final verdict, proving time after time that extending the deadline for an assignment is actually a good thing. So please, if you're watching this, Professor Bradford, just give me like one, two more days top for my project. You're watching the Sal TV's home for Explorer Athletics Sports Line. Welcome to Sportsline. Whether you spent homecoming in the alleys or on the quad, there was no missing our basketball teams catching back-to-back -back dubs at GOLA. We have your recaps of all sports coming up soon. And later, I got a chance to sit down with my co-host Siobhan for this week's edition of Not on the Sideline. But first, let's take a look at our Sportsline Top 3. Number 1. Kayla Sproul has been having a good week this week, being named Player of the Week by the PhillyCollegeSports.com. Along with landing in the Philadelphia Big Five honor roll, Sproul averaged 16.6 .6 points and 15.5 rebounds across women's basketball's two games so far this season, not to mention her back-to-back double-doubles and recording a career-high 17 points against Coppin State. Number two, after earning his second individual win of the season, men's swimming and diving Steven Sosola has been named the NovaCare Student Athlete of the Week. Sosola recorded a score of 314.40 in the one meter dive in LaSalle's tri-meet with Rider University and the University of Delaware on November 13th, while also placing first in the three meter dive against Drexel earlier in the season on October 8th. And number three, is not the charismatic, charming, and intelligent analysis of LaSalle sports by myself and Siobhan, but LaSalle Athletics has launched a new mobile app to help fans keep up with their favorite Explorer sports teams. This app will feature real-time news alerts, schedules, exclusive multimedia content, game day details, and much more. Fans can manage tickets, shop for Explorer's merchandise, and receive live score notifications from games. Okay, so we need to talk about Kayla Spro because she is having herself a season so mm -hmm. far. I mean, she's been leading with points and rebounds in pretty much all of LaSalle's three games so far. So these accolades of being named, um, you know, Athlete of the Week by phillysports.com and receiving Big Five honor roll, um, you know, credits, that's, that's just so well-deserved for her. She's been incredible so far, exceeding the expectations that were already set on a pretty high bar for her. Mm -hmm. Shout out us for both thinking that Kayla, or Claire Jacobs, excuse me, yeah. should have been at a higher positioning. Obviously, they know more than us. We'll get into some <laughs> more of these hot takes as we get later in this episode, uh -huh. but that was incredible. Stasola yeah. getting the diving award. The art team, both men's and women's, have really excelled in yeah. the one and three meter dives for both sides. You can obviously see the coaching that has been from top to bottom, from uh, returners to freshmen mm -hmm. in this level, and it has been incredible. Yeah, they've really proven why, you know, they got their program saved. You know, it's really been amazing to see that they've been grinding out results. And even in meets where they didn't necessarily take the win away, they still scored really high. There's a lot of great individual performances there, so it's really great to see uh, swimming and diving get recognition. I'm really excited about this mobile app. You know, it's mm -hmm. not going to be as good as Sportsline, but what can be? Mm -hmm. But it's going to be a really great tool to have fans be able to look at schedules, get live updates and game notifications, because I know for me, whenever there's a game that we can't, you know, watch on ESPN Plus or something, mm -hmm. I always try to keep up as much as possible. So it's going to be great that this app is going to make it easier for people to stay connected to their teams. Exactly. And it just gives these great athletes that maybe are in sports that we wouldn't pay as much attention to mm -hmm. as the basketballs and sports like that get the recognition of. So I'm excited to see those live reactions and stuff like that. Obviously, if we were able to be at you 24 seven, <laughs> we would be doing it here at Sportsline, but this of app course. is gonna be the next best, th next best thing. Exactly, and that's it for top three. Now let's see how our teams did in this week's recaps. LaSalle hosted homecoming in person this year, and the men's basketball team made sure they didn't rain on anyone's festive mood in their game against U Albany. In an 8-0 run early in the game put the Explorers up 14-7, which would soon extend to a 15-3 run after six points from senior Clifton Moore. 
Although the Great Danes were able to cut the deficit to single digits, freshman Khalil Brantley had an immediate impact when he was subbed onto the court for the first time. Brantley scored six straight, putting LaSalle up 27 to 15. A routine layup from Christian Ray would then give the Blue and Gold an astonishing 16-point lead, which would only shrink to 13 going into halftime. Albany were able to play catch-up in the second half, but Moore, Ray, and sophomore Jameer Brickus all contributed to keeping LaSalle in the lead. The contest was close, but the Explorers emerged with a 67-64 victory. It was then off to the University of Delaware for another close and dramatic game. Jack Clark got the game off to a good start, sinking five points early on. The Explorers' defense was holding strong, keeping a close 18-14 scoreline, but the Explorers' offense took over, going on a 7-0 run to take back the lead 24-22. It was back and forth contest from there, but Brickus would keep the blue and gold alive with a three-pointer to force overtime. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough, and LaSalle fell 82-85 in OT. Women's basketball also took care of business on homecoming, defeating Ryder 67-58 in overtime. Didn't look like it would require an additional quarter early as the Explorers jumped out to a 10-0 lead through the opening six minutes. Ryder would cut into the lead before LaSalle went on another 11-4 run to give them an 18-point lead heading into the break. LaSalle gave up a 16-0 run to begin the third, however, making the score 42-38 heading into the fourth. LaSalle maintained a lead for a majority of the fourth, but two game-tying shots from Ryder forced overtime. Three consecutive threes from Jordan Lewis, Amy Jacobs, and Jane Hayes set the tone for a 17-8 overtime outscoring, giving LaSalle the victory in overtime. When we looked to game two, Sproul dropped 16 points in the first game, and then in the second game we saw the team that went to nearby foe Drexel for the first Big Five matchup of the year. The Explorers were cold out of the gate, trailing 18 to 10 after one, but Molly Massantonio began her impressive day by dropping nine points in the second to make it a four point game after the first half. It would be a back and forth battle in the second half, but LaSalle was never able to bring it within three points, losing 71 to 65. Sproul dropped 13 points in this one with 10 rebounds and Hain had 12 points. Cross country headed to the NCAA regionals this past Friday and in typical cross country fashion, they did pretty darn good. For the men, grad student Ryan James was the first to cross the line for LaSalle, clocking his time at 31 minutes and 12 seconds and receiving all region honors for his performance. He was followed by Tianga Mbombo, who placed 30th with a time of 31 minutes and 26 seconds. James Patak and Luke Yichu Zirikowski also appeared in the top 50, coming in 44th and 47th place respectively. For the woman, you're never going to believe this, but a Mancini was the first finisher for LaSalle. Liz Mancini crossed the line in 12th place, while twin sister Elle finished in 20th, and both received all region honors. Christine Mancini and Maeve Gimbert both finished in the top 100, finishing in 76th and 99th place, respectively. The men would round out the competition in 7th place, while the women would take 13th place. Swimming and diving took on Ryder and Delaware in a try meet at Kirkpool on homecoming where the women's team was able to defeat Ryder, but fell to Delaware, taking second place. Senior Sarah Rosetto continued her dominant start to the season, picking up two individual wins for the Explorers, first in the 200 fly and first in the 200 back. Ann Moser took it home gold as well, taking first in the 500 freestyle on the diving board. Phoebe Shea ranked second in both the one and three meter dives for the men's, and for the men's side, Zachary Wolbert tallied the individual win for the third consecutive meet, winning the 200 yard fly. LaSalle also swept the field in diving as Steven Sansola took gold in the one meter, while Sam Henninger took the hardware on the three meter dive. Despite the po positive performances for Wolbert, Sansola, and Henninger, the men's team was defeated by both Ryder and Delaware. Okay, so very exciting to have homecoming wins for basketball. Um, I gotta say the women's game was pretty nervy going to OT, mm -hmm. but it's very great that they pulled out a win. You know, versus Ryder, Jay Haynes had 19 points, which is such an amazing performance from her. She's been a pretty big name, which I'm kind of surprised by, I'm not going to lie. I didn't have her pegged as a super prominent performer. But Kayla Sproul, of course, 16 points, 14 rebounds. I mean, that in itself, just the numbers for the women against Ryder were pretty darn amazing. Yeah, Haynes has been incredible with her roles, kind of taking over for Claire Jacobs, as we'll get into in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But there's been overall great anticipation from this team which I'd like to say mm -hmm. but what we see from both the women's and men's size is I almost want to say it's a lack of a lack of conditioning almost so yeah. you can see a lot of signs of fatigue when both these teams are unable to get it done with big leads heading into the second half mm -hmm. a lot of games that are forcing overtime which of course isn't great for them but 
The women's team really did get it done at homecoming, outscoring 17 to eight in that overtime mm -hmm. frame, despite getting outscored by over 15 points in the second half. And I'm glad you brought up the fact that, you know, men's basketball or both teams really had problems with conditioning because Ashley Howard was saying he is actually really good friends with the U Albany coach. And he mm -hmm. said in the press conference afterwards that you can't get complacent against this team because they're going to fight. They're going to be, you know, a really tough team to beat. And there are a lot of turnovers, turnovers for both teams in that game. So it does go to show that once they get a comfortable lead, they almost get too comfortable with it. And that can often, you know, create some really close and dramatic games when there doesn't really need to be mm -hmm. one. Yeah, we're going to get into that in a whole lot more in just a moment. Mm -hmm. But we're going to take a quick break here. But when we come back, get ready for the spiciest the juiciest, the hottest takes you'll ever hear about your Explorer Athletics. Stay tuned. What's up, man? It's all great. Time. Who is this? You should already know who's watching you. What do you mean? It's us. LaSalle. LaSalle? LaSalle TV. Oh, we are watching LaSalle TV. What are the, oh my god, I swear, these sports show hosts just get dumber and dumber as time goes on. Like, I can't believe people are actually paid money, real money, more than what I make at my job to say this stupid stuff. Like, I can't believe this crap. Oh my god. I'm just gonna, I'm about to lose it. I'm about to lose it. Like, this is just, how can they even, like... Hey, what you doing? This stupid sports show. These people have no idea how the game of basketball is played. Not at all. Hey, you're not you when you don't watch LaSalle TV. Here, let me show you. Have much more left, but the only reason why... For everyone else, it's a one year left, but... You better now? Better. You're not you when you're not watching LaSalle TV. To stay up to date, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Welcome back. Now, Siobhan and I say a lot of things on this desk. Mm -hmm. We proudly wear the title of Talking Heads, and we say a lot of things that ultimately wind up not coming true. But whether that's true or not, we are still going to give you our greatest takes here, mm -hmm. right here, right now, a special edition of Hot Takes, and Siobhan, start us off. Okay, thanks, Tyler. Uh, people probably know I do have quite a few opinions regarding LaSalle sports, and a lot of them do have to do with men's soccer, so I thought, naturally, we'll start there. Uh, this first hot take is going to an individual player. I think across the two seasons that he's been here so far, Scott Beeks has been men's soccer's best player, their most influential player. He's a midfielder, and the creativity and the leadership that he brings to the field is absolutely amazing. Leading goal scorer his first season at LaSalle, which was the COVID season where you know, everything was just out of whack. There was a huge adjustment period for a lot of the freshmen. He still came out a leading goal scorer. Even this season, he got injured. He had a really bad knee injury. He came back with one goal, four assists. You know, and like I said before, he's a vocal leader on the field. I tell you, when you're at a men's soccer game, you will hear that British accent throughout the entire freaking game. You will hear it. And, you know, he commands the field. He commands the defense and the offense. He's got a very quintessentially European style of play, which is obviously only an advantage in American collegiate soccer because not all teams have that. So, you know, for me, he's really the most influential player, and he's the player that, because American soccer very much focuses on a couple like star players, I think he definitely ne needs to be the player that the team does focus on. I'll quickly disagree with that, just for the simple point that for Scott Beeks, obviously, if this was a 
more polished team this year. We were obviously yeah. expecting higher expectations out of this team. Yeah. If we saw more production, I think that would be the perfect role for him to see mm -hmm. that catalyst in the next level. But when you have a team that was stalling on offense so much this mm -hmm. year, I don't know how you can't say it's not right. Yeah. We've talked about him week after week. He had, when it was his best performances, it usually resulted in a win for the Explorers. He was the only Explorer to have multi, multi goal games. Mm -hmm. And he was just in a catalyst for this offense that really needed it when they were stalling. So if there was more of an offensive presence and we had more strikers that were capable of getting a goal per game sort of production, mm -hmm. I think Beeks would be much bigger role, but yeah. we just need more around him. And I love Junior Nari, but I'm a very big believer in just looking past the goals and you know mm -hmm. focusing on production. And then the next thing that I do want to talk about is Definitely with track and field, they mm. need more hype. You know, I get the hype around basketball. I obviously get the hype around soccer. But track and field is one of our best performing teams, if not the best performing team. And for a group of people who trade basically throughout the entire year, they have essentially three seasons. I just think that their performances are amazing. Their work rate is amazing. The Mancini sisters are this dynasty. The consistency is insane. They work incredibly hard, but they're still humble. Even though track is a very individual sport, there's great team chemistry. I literally saw them all playing kickball today. Mm -hmm. Like, they were just hanging out, having fun. So I really do believe that track and field, I know that we talk about them a lot and how good they are, but just in the general sense of LaSalle, they need more of the hype. They deserve it. The Mancini sisters don't get talked about enough, and they're mm -hmm. all we try and talk about because what they do here for this Explorers team is mm -hmm. unbelievable from top to bottom, and we'll see more of it. Obviously, we talk about cross country and the long distance. Yeah. When they get to the track season, they'll get the same honors, but mm -hmm. when all the additional field events come into play and the sprinters come into play, mm -hmm. it's going to be a whole different ballgame. We're going to be talking about them a lot. Absolutely, and for my final hot take, I and this isn't even a hot take because I know most of LaSalle agrees with me, you know, we talked about how they cut seven programs last season. I don't think they should have cut seven. I think if you're going to cut some, four or five at the most, I understand that it was a money thing. I'm an English and communication major, so I don't understand numbers and money and all that. But it did create a lot of tension within the athletics you know, world, and a lot of the athletes now are kind of nervous about their production. And it's just, it created a really toxic and just not great environment. You know, they wanted to emulate other D1 schools by having less programs but then they don't have the social media or the facilities up to date. So it's like how on competition and how on brand with other D1 schools can you be in more than just the number of teams you have? Yeah, this one I agree with, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna go to some of mine. Mm -hmm. So the first one I wanna talk about, let's start with basketball. I'm gonna say that Christian Ray is the most important player on this Explorers team. And you can talk about the point totals that come together, but the one thing I wanna point out is that you almost forget when he is having a good game. In homecoming, mm -hmm. he almost seemed to be a non-factor. But then when you mm -hmm. go into the stat sheet, he's been incredible this year. He has 8.7 points per game, a 47% field goal, 33% from three, nine rebounds per game from a very undersized small forward. Mm -hmm. He is always leading inside huddles whenever they're getting it in between a foul call or whatever, there may be a positive time. He is a vocal leader on this team and he just does it with conviction. He had 12 points in homecoming. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember him seeing one go down. Yeah. You, you look at Nickelberry and you see the explosiveness out of him. You look mm -hmm. at Clark and you see the potential in him. Mm -hmm. But when you look at Christian Ray, he is the epitome of a glue guy. You know, Christian Ray is definitely one of the best. I have to agree that he's the most important player now, but I do think that Khalil Brantley, you know, he's a freshman. I think that he's really going to be a good factor coming forward. So I'll agree with Christian Ray for now, mm. but once he graduates, I'm saying Khalil Brantley is going to take that we'll title We'll see that from him. for sure. My second is going to be that women's lacrosse, I think is the best program we have currently here at LaSalle that plays a sport that requires a goal. And I obviously know that you were going to talk differently when we look at the soccer teams, but yeah. when you look at what this team has lost last year and the, how deep this program was in terms of goal scores, I mean, their top six point getters last year are all gone. Mm -hmm. But the production they have coming up, Lola Quigley, Jess Suloff, all these players that are young and mm -hmm. got to learn from them, they're going to flourish this year, even though losing a boatload of seniors. Exactly. You know, I, I do have to respectfully disagree because I ride for our soccer teams through and through. But mm -hmm. this season, definitely, it was not, you know, their best season. So I think overall, I'd have to still favor soccer. But, you know, with the season that they had, I can't really defend that because the numbers speak for themselves. So I think I'll have to see what lacrosse does mm -hmm. this season to be able to make that conviction. But... I'm still going to stay with my soccer teams. I love them too much. We'll see. And then number three, I will go back to soccer. Mm -hmm. Michelle Araguardo is going to win an Atlantic 10 Goaltender of the Year. 
despite her really not even being the starter this year. That's probably my mm -hmm. hottest take of all of them. Okay. I think she's going to be incredible. She pretty much, I don't want to say took the job from Jordan Stallard, but she just had so much more conviction this year. A 1.32 goal allowed per average, 51 saves, a 797 save percentage. That ranked amongst the top for several categories mm -hmm. in the Atlantic 10. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't even the starter. She's a true freshman. And if she stays here, she is going to be lights out. Yeah, she's still very young, so I think it's a little early to be making, you know, very bold predictions like that. But I would love to see her win that honor. And I think that the more she gets integrated into the team and the more experience she gets, that's definitely a possibility. So um, I don't know if we'll see it maybe a freshman and sophomore year, but maybe as an upperclassman, she'll mm -hmm. definitely take those honors. And that is it for our hot take segment. And hopefully Tyler and I can still be friends after this. <laughs> But when we come back, we'll take a look at the week ahead for LaSalle Athletics. Unlike other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. Third line, please. D E P R E S S I O N. Mental illness doesn't show up on a scale. Bipolar? <laughs> Sorting out a mental health concern is not something to attempt on your own. Hmm. Anxiety. I thought so. Like many health conditions, help for mental illness takes professional diagnosis and treatment. And the sooner you seek treatment, the better. Look at that. 6,000 steps and PTSD. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, don't go it alone. Find out what to do. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral, call 1-800-662-HELP. Learn more at samhsa.gov support. Welcome back. Winter sports are in full swing for the blue and gold, with plenty of action coming at you this week. First, women's and men's swimming will travel to Lewisburg for the Bucknell invite all weekend. Then they'll have to dry off quick and hit the buses to make way for Villanova on Tuesday. Men's and women's cross country are heading down south to Tallahassee, Florida for the NCAA championships. Women's basketball has a pair of non-conference games this week, first at home this Saturday at 1 against Niagara, and then Tuesday against Lafayette will come to Tom Gola Arena. Men's basketball only has one game until we see you next, facing off against Army at 4 o'clock at home. And I know that it's only one game that we're going to see out of this men's team, but mm -hmm. I think it is a huge week for them to kind of set the pace for their non-conference. And I think it's going to be a very difficult game oh, absolutely. against Army because this is a team that really clashes with the style mm -hmm. of LaSalle. For years past, I mean, you talk about the Army football aspect yeah. of it, just a powerhouse sort of team. They're the same way in basketball. They are led by strong power forward and center play offensively. Mm -hmm. They're going to bully ball it down low. And I don't know if we're ready for that because one of the problems that we've seen out of this men's team is the inability to get rebounds, the inability mm -hmm. to score inside. Mm -hmm. And we've seen some production from Jack Clark, for example. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're expecting a lot of things from him, but he's a slasher. Mm -hmm. We've seen Nickelberry take over one game, and then the other game, Christian Ray is our leading scorer, and he's doing a lot of it. But they are both undersized, and I think that may be something that comes out of the woodwork against Army. Yeah, and I'd like to think that because they lost their most recent game and they're now one and two, I'd like to think that having that chip on their shoulder and playing with something to prove mm -hmm. would motivate them to win this game. But there's really just no telling. That inconsistency is going to be, you know, the fall of LaSalle basketball because, like you were saying, there's a lot of different players that show up in different games, and it's almost like they kind of pick and choose when they want to do well and, you know, mm -hmm. get the points that they need. So... I think that we are capable of winning against Army. I just am not entirely confident that they're actually going to play up to that potential and get the result. And when we look at this women's side, they have a couple of games that we're going to be really keeping an eye on. And the mm -hmm. main thing we've got to look at is Claire Jacobs. Yeah. This season, 8.7 points per game, 29% field goal, 29% three-point. Mm -hmm. That is not what we're expecting to see out of her. She went one for 11 on homecoming. Yeah. Obviously, that's something that she's going to wear. She is capable of... All the slander, she always just seems to come back stronger off of it. But right now, it's been Amy Jacobs that has kind of been their leading three-point shooter. I mean, mm -hmm. she's been taking the majority of the shots from the outside, something that we saw Molly Massantonio doing. And I think that's going to change because 
Masantoni had such a rough start to her season, yeah. but then this last game against Drexel, she scores nine points all in the second quarter, including a half court, half court heave, I should say. Yeah. So I obviously think that Masantoni is going to come back and be a catalyst for this team. Jacobs, Amy Jacobs, I mean, it's great that she's been getting this production, but mm -hmm. they're obviously wanting to see it from Claire because Sproul and Haynes can't just do it 100% on their own. You know, took the words right out of my mouth because, yeah, Sproul and Hayes have been doing great, but they can't carry the team on their backs because it's going to burn them out way before the season's over, and then it's going to leave the team floundering. Definitely need to see more from Mass Antonio and Claire Jacobs, and not just because that's what's expected of them because they've proven themselves to be such good players, not only for them individually, but for the team. You know, the women's basketball team, they have a great group of girls this year. Mass Antonio was saying in interviews that the chemistry is better than it's ever been. They really feel like a family because they've had the time to bond. So I feel like it's almost doing a disservice by, you know, not capitalizing on how great that chemistry has been mm -hmm. and not matching the great performances of your teammates because it should encourage and inspire you to be on that same level with them. And the fact that we haven't really talked about Claire Jacobs and we've only talked about Amy Jacobs a little, I'm not going to lie, it's disappointing because mm -hmm. they've, they're very much kind of the poster girls for women's basketball. And, you know, we don't want to see them kind of lose that status just because their production is suffering for reasons unknown. Yeah. So we'll see if they're able to clean up any of those factors. I obviously still think that it's crazy that they're just going for this style mm -hmm. from Mount McGillery, just yeah. not utilizing bigs at all. Yeah. The men's basketball team is the same way. Clifton Moore has had a pretty solid season, but they're not utilizing the inside. I hope this isn't a reoccurring theme throughout the rest of the season, but mm -hmm. we're going to need some wins out of them early. Yeah, so basically Tyler's going to start coaching basketball, and that about just time. about wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to see the Explorer Report, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com. You can also check out the digital edition of The Collegian, which now features Sportsline content. Also, check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TV and on Instagram at SportslineLTV. We welcome you to send your thoughts and suggestions there. This week's poll is, who's more likely to ruin Thanksgiving with the controversial takes at the table? Me or Siobhan? I'll, busy, I'll be too busy eating mashed potatoes, so I'm going to say Tyler. That's like the last thing you should be getting on, but okay. No, whatever. I love potatoes. Okay, whatever. Hot take. Um, but for <laughs> our entire sports line team, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Tyler Small. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. At the game.